said, well, we've been delivering to these to these ladies, these salads, same order six times. So then we look, start looking through and they have they've been ordering like every other day, 50, 60 dollar order using a different card, a different name, different email address, but delivering to the same place, ordering online. There we go right there. What's going on, Pizza King Podcast listeners? Uh, it's your host, Tyrell Reed. Back back again, back on the mic. Excited to be back. Been going way too long dealing with hurricanes and, you know, back-to-back hurricanes and getting the store, you know, back open after both of those storms has been, uh, you know, obviously, you know, just one of those, uh, you know, just one of those challenges. Like, you just hate that you have to go through it, but you also have some sort of appreciation because you you know what everybody's going through. And uh, you know, I'm just happy to be able to to sit here and get back on this mic and and, and kick it with all my pizza family, all my pizza folks. So um so yeah, so just just excited to be back. We uh, I got a couple of things to go through on the show today. Obviously I'm gonna, you know, catch you up on what's been, what's been going on or what happened with the storms, you know, both here at the house and at the stores, um, and just had a lot of love from, from some of my pizza friends and, and the community, just, just looking out for us and, you know, just helping us out through, through, uh, you know, through that, a lot of folks reached out, you know, really appreciate all of that. Everybody that, that hit me up, um, you know, either through text or through DM or, you know, even people that, that left messages and comments, just, you know, just saying that they had us in the prayers and they were they were thinking about us and wishing us well and, you know, hoping that we stay safe. You know, I just appreciate all of that, all of that love, because it does not uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. And like I said, like I always say, you know, the pizza community is is one of the dopest communities because obviously everybody sticks together. And there's so much there was so much love that got poured out for me and for my family. So, you know, sending that love right back. I appreciate everybody. And uh, yeah, we're good. And we're good. We made it. We made it through that thing. Uh, I got a new segment this this week. New segment as a you know an honor to my to my landlord brothers uh, Bruce and, and Jay. We used to have a segment on our other pod on on that's on everything, which we need to get back to that's on everything podcast. That was so fun doing that with with the homies. And, uh, but we had a, we used to do a little segment called Landlord Chronicles where they would just tell us all of the, you know, some of, not all of the, but some of the, some of the horror stories when it comes to being a landlord and, you know, working through whatever is going on with tenants. So we're going to start Restaurant Chronicles because as y'all know, y'all all all run, you know, you run your shops or, or, uh, you know, your, your, your trucks or your, your pop-ups or whatever, but you deal with customers, you deal with staff, you, you know, that there's always going to be, you know, a challenge in this thing. So in honor of that, we're going to start restaurant Chronicles. I don't have pizza of the week, but you know, obviously if you've been, if you've been following, I'm still, still heavy on posting the pizza game, posting the pizzas, you know, really trying to grow that store page. Hey, shout out to Louie from South Bay, by the way, cause he has been, He's been, uh, man, he's been helping me out big time with just trying to get my, get my content right, making sure my edits look good, you know, help me work through some lighting, some, you know, just giving me some real basic tips on how he was able to grow his page and his following and, and what that means for his business. So he's been passing that love on, um, to me. So, you know, Louie, my bro, appreciate you for sure. You already know we, you know, we text, so, you know, just, just love on, on looking out for your boy with that because, uh, because it's, you know, it's just appreciated. We all, you know, we all want to grow. We all want to, we all want to have great businesses and, 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 you know, make sure that all this work that we're putting in isn't, you know, for, for nothing. Right. So, you know, shout out to him for that. We've been, it's been going, we've been going hard on the pizza in the pizza shop operators chat on Instagram. And, uh, and there's, and we have the chat on, on Facebook too, but the Instagram chat is, is definitely 
you know, a, a whole lot more active. But if you're an operator, you're an owner, it's for, it's an owner's only uh, chat and group, private group. And you want to get in, just hit me up, send me a message and we'll get you an invite over to that group. Um, shout out to Bruce on Smart Pizza Marketing and Slice for putting that together for us just to have that forum to to bounce ideas, bounce, uh, you know, best practices and, you know, just talk about some of the challenges that we all go through. I mean, it's it's everything in that in that chat from dough talk to uh, to suppliers to prices that were, you know, people are paying for cheese. We you know, we talk through content. They talk through a lot. It's a it's a lot to take in. So I get on there. <laughs> And I'm all I'm notorious for, you know, spending uh, a lot of time away from from social. So when I come back to it, I got all these messages and you you're in that chat and you're scrolling because it's active. Right. That chat active, and you in there and you got to You got to scroll up and you go and scroll because you don't want to miss anything because there could have been something that can help your business um, that happened yesterday. But it's 100. It's 100 messages deep. So, you know, you take the time, scroll, get in there and and catch up on what's going on because there could be some jewels in there. And there's so much advice. I mean, team building, management tips, leaderships. There was someone talking about having an issue with, a, a, you know, someone that was regarded as not replaceable in that restaurant and how, how they deal with that. So, man, there's just so many, so many nice, deep conversations going on in that chat. That I would, I would advise any owner, any operator, if you're out there and you're looking for a community to be a part of, jump on that jump on that for sure so yeah you can send me a message i'll send you an invite um or if you i'm sure if you anybody that is even close to listening to me or any of this stuff so if you listen to me i know you you already follow and you already listen to bruce so uh but you can hit up bruce and get and get the invite to that too so yeah join the chat because the chat is jumping join the chat we uh Oh, let me get my notes. Let me get my notes. Oh, so, <laughs> so my first note. Well, actually, before I get to it, but I'll tell you what it says. The first note. Well, and I, here's what we're gonna talk through today. Um, back to back hurricanes. Just you know what it was like going through that, and you know what the recovery was like, and how long it took us to get back open. Uh, we we got Pizza Tomorrow Summit coming up in Orlando, November sixth and seventh, as part of the Florida Restaurant Show. Looking forward to seeing anybody there. Obviously, I'm, I'm here in Florida, so you know I'm in the building. Uh, I'll be doing a, a segment on leadership development, soft skills development. So if you have if you have time and you're in Orlando or in the area, come check it out. And if you please come say what's up to me so we can uh, so we can chat about what you're doing. And then I got a new segment and, you know, for Restaurant Chronicles. And, and all I wrote on there was scamming ass scammers, scamming ass scammers. They, they are relentless. So I, I can't wait to tell you the story about how uh, how these folks got us for about three hundred dollars. Scamming ass scammers. But, you know, like 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 I said earlier, going through the hurricanes. And if you don't know we're you know, I'm here in the Tampa, Florida area and we have been impacted by, you know, two hurricanes in the last couple of weeks. Hurricane Helene, which came through, hit the panhandle. But you know, really uh, did some damage with those outer bands here in the Tampa Bay area, knocking out power, um, you know, a lot of trees down, a lot of debris, huge, huge amount of storm surge and flooding. Um, that was crazy. I mean, just just seeing that one, that was like one of those those horrific scenes that you see on on TV and you're just not used to it happening where you are and where you live. So many people that I know lost all of their shit. I'm talking the flood came through South Tampa with a vengeance. St. Pete, Clearwater, the Barrier Islands all got just just totally, totally devastated with flood water. And as we're still in recovery mode from that, you know, the word comes that there's another storm on the way. So, you know, everybody gets into you know, right back into prep mode from recovery mode into prep mode. And that was, that was a lot for this community, man. You know, prayers to all of our folks down there. We, you know, I talked to, to guys from South Tampa and I was, you know, went down to, you know, just, just to go check on Bob and check on the store. He, he took on a lot of flood water, 
and West Shore One. And, you know, as I'm down there, he's, you know, getting the new equipment brought in, trying to help these guys get the old equipment out because so many things got flooded. He took a foot and a half, two feet of water in the restaurant. I mean, that was like up halfway through the bottom deck of the oven. Pizza tables gone, freezers gone. Um, all of that stuff just just uh in an instant. You know, they were in the store. They said they were in the store till nine, nine thirty. And by eleven o'clock. Can you go somewhere? Thank you. Just be quiet. This dog loves moving around once I get uh once I get recorded. So, you know, like I said, they were they were in the store till nine thirty and by eleven o'clock everything was was you know the water had risen up over the over the over the curb through the parking lot starting to come into the restaurant within an hour and a half so you know thankfully they were able to get out and nobody was 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 hurt in the process or trapped in the process however it's devastating and, and when i tell you when that when i saw the pictures and when i saw the video the next day it's crazy to see like to see your stuff floating like it's about to go down a river somewhere um stuff that is supposed to be stationary being moved around um it's crazy it's crazy it's it's so it's uh it's sobering to see that but then it's like and then you and then you and you you drive and you're you know you're in that part of town and i have to show i, I got some video I'll, I'll show um after as i edit this how to you know include it but i'll show some of the video of you know me just riding around down there and it's like imagine riding down the street and it looks like every person on that street just got evicted and had to put all that shit out on the road because that's what it was. All of their belongings, all of their possessions, everything out on the street. And you are in restart, rebuild, back to ground zero mode. It was wild. It was wild. It was crazy to see, to see that devastation. And of course, not of course, but you know, in, in where I live, we didn't get, you know, impact like that. So we kind of, we kind of woke up the next day, you know, we lost power at the store for that storm. JR and I were there, couldn't get any staff to come in. It was starting to get pretty windy. So, you know, and, and you know, and, and deciding to err on the side of caution, we, we shut the store down about four o'clock. The storm was supposed to come through at, you know, nine, 10 that night. But it was starting to get, you know, starting to get a little bit, you know, on on the bad side with the weather. So we shut it down. And within an hour of shutting it down, we lost power in at the store. And thankfully we were, you know, we got through all of our customers. We got it all done, but we lost power. Power's off for a couple of hours there. And uh, you know, we get up the next morning and you know, we, you know, start to figure out what's what's going on, what, where's the damage, what we need to take care of. And we're looking at it like it was pretty tame. I never lost power at the house, which never happens. I always lose power here at my house during the storm. Never lost power. JR didn't lose power at his house. Like, man, that storm was like, that storm was kind of weak as far as storms go. And this was the one that hit in the panhandle. So it was a good ways away from us. So we're thinking that it was nothing. But then the news starts to come in and you see all the flood and you see all of the all of the water that came in from the bay and around the bay and around the Gulf and how much devastation it caused. Um, you know, shout out to my, to my boy, George, who has people over in Pinellas County, George is from Good Days Pizza down in, in the Fort Lauderdale, uh, Miami area, but he's got, he's from over here and he's got folks. He's, I mean, he sent me video of, of the place he grew up in his parents' house. Totally, totally devastated. So, you know, in, in, you know, George, if you, I know if you hear this, you, first of all, we got to get back on here. We, we recorded one, but we're not going to, we're not going to air that one, but we need to record again. But also, man, just, just know family obviously still in our prayers and in our thoughts. And, you know, I know that the recovery effort goes on and I hope that you get everything that you need. And if, you know, obviously if you need something from me, hit me up, bro. So seeing that was, was crazy because it's it's so close it becomes something that's so close to home it's then it becomes real but then it's like all right then there's another storm coming and we got to get ready 
and this one's big and they're and all of the news is you know telling you know this is this is crazy this is, it should be a category six and when you're in florida you're used to you know the storms are coming it's storm season you know we always get these and you know we're always ready to you know to deal with whatever's going to happen usually it's just you know losing power so you prepare to be without power for however many days or you know weeks it's going to be water food you know charcoal propane all that good shit but somehow this storm was like scaring everybody so so many people were reaching out to me like hey you leaving you gonna evacuate i'm like well i'm not in the evacuation zone so i'm you know i'm not going anywhere uh we're safe safest place for us to be is at home because and i'll tell you this you know to all the folks that are like you y'all should get out of there go north i think there is a point you know where you got to make that decision but if you you can't decide too late because when I tell you I-75 became a park, like once you're like a, a day or two before the storm and there's so many people evacuating and there's mandatory evacuations, you can't even drive on. They, they actually open up the other side of the highway so all the traffic can go north. There's no southbound traffic on 75. Everybody's going north trying to get away. I don't want to be in that. I don't want to be in that. So I feel I feel safer here at my house where I'm prepared. I got all of my stuff. I got, you know, I got my family in. Um, and trust me, I'm not going to put the kids in harm's way. But a lot of people were reaching out because this one was scary and there was a lot of news around it. So, you know, we're leading up to the storm and, you know, normally we don't we don't get in panic mode. But Alan, who is my like my source for news and things like that, even I could see that even he was starting to he was starting to get. Hey man, this one's getting pretty serious. I think I'm gonna board the house up. So. All right, well, I got the, I got the, I bought the drill, we got the, you know, got the plywood, boarded up my stuff yesterday. I think, and, you know, he told Jay, I think y'all should really think about, you know, boarding up and doing that too. So we're like, all right, well, we can get plywood and, you know, we'll figure out a way to do it and we'll board up the store. And so we found a place in Plant City, drove out. I got like a bunch of plywood in the back of my towel, hanging out, you know, driving through town. And at that point, no, it was so hard to find supplies and, and, you know, plywood, things like that. At that point, it wasn't looking good. There was, you know, lines everywhere, Lowe's, Home Depot, you know, people waiting on supplies, people, you know, posting on the ring app. There's, you know, going to be a plywood truck coming to Lowe's and, you know, at four o'clock and stuff like that. All this stuff that nobody could even really know um, was starting to happen. And we got, you know, we ended up getting a tip on a place to to get some to get some plywood. They, they were like, we closed in 40 minutes, so you got to get here. And it's like 30 minutes from where we are. So haul ass over there, fill up with plywood, get enough for the store, my house, JR's house, and his uh and his his mother in law's house. So we get this, you know, we get all the wood, and, you know, we, we we load it up, we start boarding up all of our stuff. You know, shout out to Alan for being an MVP. He had the tools. He helped us out. He he went through it so that it was going to be a whole lot easier for all of us. So we boarded up the house. First time I ever boarded up my house. First time we've ever boarded up the store. Um, so we, we were, you know, at that point taking it serious. And, you know, storm comes through. It was it was, it was a big dog. I think it made landfall like a, like category four or whatever. But the eye came right over us, right through us. And when I tell you, you know, coming out in the morning, you know, we lost power, you know, as the eye started to pass over our area, we lost power as usual. But you come out in the morning and you see, oh, it wasn't that bad. I had some fence pickets down and one of my palms in the front got beat up pretty bad. But overall, my neighborhood wasn't wasn't terrible. But then you try to get out to the road and we were pinned. Oak trees down all over here can't get out can't get through the road can't get out on this end can't get out over there you're stuck in until somebody either moves a tree or cuts it up and gets it gets it going there's power lines down everywhere you can see that this one is going to be it's going to be something and you know when we're finally able to get out and move around you know power's out at the store you never know how long it's going to be you know you give it you give it a day we got you know we got our stuff sealed up pretty good and in freezers and thankfully we keep our freezers in the cooler so we kind of have that you know that double that double wall of protection but we had everything st you know stored and stuffed in our freezers and into the coolers so you know that you got a couple of days 
before you have to uh before you have to start figuring that stuff out you know day one goes no no power or nothing day two jr and i like man we gotta we gotta figure it out now meanwhile you know the the really gotta say the real mvp for us was chris and andy at the west shore pizza in valrico and and i think i told you before on the show go make you some friends and pizza go make you some pizza friends and some restaurant friends thank god we had those restaurant friends because they saved us they had power you know they had power the next day they got back on pretty quickly they i don't I, I say it's because they're on they're right next to the hospital, so they're obviously on the same grid as as Baycare Health Hub. So that you know, good on them for being somewhere where they're they're gonna they're gonna make sure they get back up pretty quickly. So they have power and they were able to get you know able to clear some space for us to move all of our stuff over. We loaded up the truck. We put free. We took a freezer over there. You know, loaded up the truck, took everything over over to their store. So we were able to save um, the bulk of our food. Now we had to throw, you know, obviously we threw a lot of stuff away, but we were we were able to save the bulk of our food um, thanks to those guys. And you know, I, there's there's no way to repay them for what for what they say does. We're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of food. So just uh just know that pizza's on me if you ever want one. But they make the same pizza I make, so I doubt they want it. But they saved us. So we were able to move our food and then we're, you know, starting to then it's the waiting game. Like when when will we have power so that we can get back open? And if you've seen the news, it was it was it was a challenge. There was millions of people without power here in Florida. It took us a four, four or five days to get our power back. Um, you know, it took a little bit longer here at my house, but that was fine. We kind of camped out a little bit and cooked outside i can't wait to show y'all now that we're through this i can't wait to show y'all my ass trying to make pizza on the fire pit outside total crime scene total crime scene <laughs> oh, i can't wait to post that it was it was all bad so um but just trying to make the best out of it you know having you know running usb lights ring lights the stuff that i use for this uh to have light in the evening and candles and um you know really just in in that you know, waited out mode while while they try to bring people back up, bring people back online. I tell you though, the most entertaining part of all of this is as you know, as folks are waiting, you you're getting communication, and you don't have like power or internet or anything like that. So I didn't, I don't, you know, I didn't get to see, I didn't know what was going on anywhere else. I was, you know, super hyper focused on, you know, taking care of our situation. So you don't know how bad it is anywhere else. You don't see the damage and there's no cell service. So people are, you know, just checking in like, man, it looks bad. Y'all you, you, all right. And, you know, we're obviously, I'm, you know, trying to communicate with folks as best I can. Yeah, we're good. We're safe. We just need power. I didn't realize how bad it was in other places until well, well after the storm and, you know, getting power and internet back so that we can kind of see what was really happening out there. But it was it was devastating and to see, you know, all the tornadoes that happen. And I mean, this was devastation all the way across the state. One of the worst storms I've seen, probably the worst storm I've seen since I live here. But what was entertaining was all of the false and misinformation being distributed on the Ring app and the next door app. I mean, it was just comedy yes, at one point, like people were scrambling, looking for gas and looking for food and, you know, anywhere that's open. <laughs> And, you know, when, when it's like post apocalypse, it's like post apocalypse and after a hurricane, when half of the plate, you know, most folks have no power and, you know, whatever it does, they, they get open and, you know, people swarm, like you pull in on a parking lot, you know, thinking something's open and another car sees you, then they pull in and another car sees them and they pull in. And next thing you know, there's 20 cars pulling up to a dollar general because they thought it saw, they thought they saw a light on in there. It's wild. So there was a lot of information being put out on the Ring app. And, and I, I felt like just breaking my phone because it was like it was going off nonstop. Nonstop. Oh, there's oh, Culver's is open over there or uh, this store. There, there's gas at the at the 7-Eleven on 60 in, in Mount Carmel. And it's like and then it, it, it hardly ever true. Hardly ever true. I think people were just trolling just trolling people on the apps, just, just causing frenzy over all the, over stuff that just wasn't even true. Like I would say 
80 to 90 percent of the stuff that was getting put out on the ring app was all bullshit <laughs> it was all it was all bullshit because none of, like it just was it was it was terrible but then there's like all the people who are asking questions like who where's their gas where where can i find plywood anyone know where to like little stuff where can i find where can i find a pizza place to deliver to me right now foolishness foolishness it was like it first it was entertaining then it was annoying then it was upsetting because like who has time to toy with people when we're all just trying to uh just trying to survive out here not survive i think saying survive is dramatic but we're all just trying to make the best out of a of a, a, a terrible situation that shit was, that shit was driving me crazy it was, it was pissing me off <laughs> but we got through it so you know once we got power back we're able to move our stuff back you know get a get some prep going and, and get open for monday which was exciting because we're just ready like you know the people in our community and our community took you know a little bit longer to get power than everybody else so there were still a lot of folks around the store that didn't have powers and, and it's a you know very rural area and you know a lot of old trees older houses a lot of damage and it still looks bad and here we are a week and a half later and it still looks really bad so they were like dying for anything that felt like normal so when we got up when we got back open our our customers they showed us so much love and they were just happy to see us and we were just happy to see them and do something that wasn't you know it's nothing. That's what you do when, when there's, you got no, no phone, no, no internet. And the kids are streaming. I can't wait to see what my, my data roaming is going to look like. Cause the kids are just streaming, streaming their shows all day. Um, you know, playing outside, we're trying to cook and find food, go out and find food in the morning. So we have dinner to make, you know, on the fire outside. And I got to love my back porch a lot more, but I was ready to work, like ready to get back slinging some pies and uh and we and we got back to it and you know thank god that it, it it wasn't longer than it was because you know there's still some places that are underwater without power without access um and you drive around and you still see it so prayers to all of those folks and uh i'm hoping for a quiet end of season and uh i did learn a, a few lessons on preparedness in, in all of this. So, you know, we were ready. We were as ready as we could be, but we'll be even more ready uh, for next storm season. That's for sure. But also, you know, what I, what I wanted to get to in, in the restaurant Chronicles was, you know, even so, you know, happy to see all of our people back and our customers, but you know, there's always, you know, two sides of the coin. And actually, before I get to that, well, it, it don't matter. I'll, I'll tell y'all another week about the, the damage that we took at the store. I don't, honestly, the damage we took at the store doesn't even matter at this point. But just to let you, the, the first storm knocked out an AC unit, like the, the power surge blew up the blower motor for our air handler. So working on that, got the part. By the time we got the part, other storm was on the way. So we told them, just wait, we'll do it after the storm. And the second storm knocked out. Uh a wire, some burn up a wire, the power surge burn up a wire to the walk-in cooler. So we're down to AC, down a walk-in cooler, but, and as he's fixing that, he knocked out one of the ceiling lights. So no light, no cooler, no AC, one of the ACs, but that don't matter. We got through it and, you know, all is well now, everything works and we are, we are back in business, but it sucked to have to go through that. But anyways, on to the restaurant Chronicles. So happy to see our customers back, you know, and you always hope that you're going to pick up some new business because you, you get to see some new faces. You know, I met a lot of people that were, hey, yeah, my regular place still doesn't have power. So I saw y'all were open and I uh, just wanted to try you out. What, what You know, all that. It's a lot of new faces. But there's always some bad with the good. And we got <laughs> got scammed by some scamming ass scammers hitting us with, you know, on the delivery. So we, we started getting deliveries. We started doing delivery again after a couple of days, the roads cleared up. We can, we can deliver, you can get gas. So we start delivering and we're, you know, we get an order. I actually took the first one to, uh, it was like a little doctor's office or some kind of health place and took the order in three salads. You know, there's some girls in there. So we drop it off. I had my son with me. So we dropped that, dropped that delivery off. And the next day we got an order from the same place. Like, oh, damn, I guess they, I guess they liked it. They, you know, they hit us up. They, they called us back. 
like $50 order. They like customize the hell out of these salads, like $50, $60 order. Oh, um, so they order and then they order, you know, a couple of more times over the last week, six times in the last week and week and a half, which I guess that's how you know, right? But I get a call the other day. I was at stop by the store and I answered the phone and the guy's like, Hey, y'all, y'all just charge my card $60 and I don't, I don't even know what this is. I didn't order no pizza. I actually, I'm not, I actually live in Colorado. I'm not even in Florida. I'm like, huh? What do you mean? I'm like, oh no, I saw, yeah, we just took, I see the total. We took the delivery over to you to, you know, Mrs. Whatever. And it was like the same last name as him, Mrs. Jones or whatever. He was like, well, there ain't no Mrs. Jones and I'm not in Florida. That's a scam because my card is with me and I didn't order no food. I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, damn, well, y'all, you've been ordering like a lot from, from over there. He goes, well, this is the only charge on my card. But I'm like, oh shit. Well, we've been delivering to these, to these ladies, these salads, same order six times. So then we look, start looking through and they have, they've been ordering like every other day, 50, $60 order using a different card, a different name, different email address, but delivering to the same place, ordering online. So dumb. Like what? What, what, first of all, what's wrong with people? Are you that stupid that you gonna order delivery to your job using a stolen credit card? So what we find is that they, and they hit us and we had flagged the address, but under a different name and email address. So it never came up when they were ordering again, because we had a charge back from them back, you know, four or five months ago, we caught it, flagged the address, but it didn't, it didn't catch it. Cause they used new info or we flagged the account that did it the first time, but they were using new accounts, fake email addresses, new names. And after we, after we got through finding all of them, it was about $300 that they just, they just stole from, not just from us that they stole from whoever's cards they're using and stealing from like, all right, whatever. So then we, we just like, you know, we called a company like y'all got, you got people in your company that are scamming and, and we need to figure it out because we, t we dropped off $300 worth of food. We're going to get all these chargebacks. We got people calling us saying our, their cars are being charged. And meanwhile, your employees are over there having a great time. And then, and obviously it's not just one person cause they're buying like three, four salads at a time. Like what y'all feed in the office on some stolen shit, dumbasses. Let me, let me stop. But anyway, like, whatever. So they're, you know, they're going to start their investigation to make sure they're not stealing like patient cards. Like, so you about to, you about to potentially lose your job and get in even more trouble because you stole credit card information to order lunch and to get delivery at that. Like, we know where you are and where you work. And it took everything in me not to just go over there. But we're going to let it let it play out how it plays out. You know, we'll we'll, you know, do take whatever recourse we need to take. But like, come on, people. Like, first of all, why are you scamming? You at work, you getting money. Why are you scamming? And then why are you taking advantage of local businesses and, a, and of people that are in your community, whether you took cars from somebody around here? Well, obviously not in the community. You took cars from some dude in Colorado. I don't even know about how that happened. But like you scamming on both sides, you stealing cars and then you ordering stuff and just and taking that. Like it's, it's the tough part of this business, knowing that there are some people that are out here to take advantage of you. Now, it doesn't change the way we interact with other people. And, you know, we call that guy back and, you know, avoided the charge, you know, took care of all that. But it's just unfortunate that these are the things that we have to protect ourselves from in this business because we just want to, we just want to provide good service, good food, you know, at a fair price to the people in our community. And while I appreciate them loving our food so much that they're willing to steal somebody else's shit to order from us, that's not the kind of business I want. They ain't the kind of customers I want, not the kind of business I want to do and, and not the kind of things that I'm not the kind of things I want to spend my time taking care of. So, to you scamming ass scammers. Yeah, you. We see you. We see you. But that's all I got today. Pizza King podcast. We're good to be back, man. It feels good to be back. Love to get some guests on. Um, hit me up, you know, schedule, schedule some time. Come get on the podcast. Let's talk about your pizza business. Come see me at Florida Restaurant Show uh, at November 6th and 7th. Um, 
you know, we'll, I'll, I'll be working a booth and I'll be speaking. So come check me out. Come check out all of the all of the things going on in the restaurant business from equipment to vendors, suppliers, uh, new technology, all those different things. It's going to be a great show. As always, we obviously we were out in California for the show. That was a great one. Florida's even bigger. Going to be a great show. So love to see you all out there. Don't forget to hit me up. Leave some feedback in the review for the show. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, and Bad Genie. Get that Bad Genie. <laughs>